Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice quartic equation. We have 2x to the fourth power equals x cubed plus 1, and we're going to be solved for x values. Looks hard, doesn't it? Well, there's a way to make it easier. First of all, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. Subtract x cubed plus 1 and set it equal to 0. So notice that this is a quartic, but it's missing a lot of terms, even though it would be nice if we didn't have the x cubed, so we could apply the quartic formula, maybe, right? I don't think you want to apply it, by the way, because it's pretty complicated. But maybe we can use a simpler formula. So let's go ahead and try to solve this. But before that, I want you to be aware of something. Have you noticed? Does this look familiar at all? Something that we've been talking about. If you look at the coefficients, the 2 and the minus 1 and the minus 1, you'll notice that their sum is 0. What, what does that mean? If the sum of the coefficients is 0 in a polynomial, that means x equals 1 is a solution. And of course, uh, this comes from the fact that x minus 1 is a factor, or they kind of imply each other by the factor theorem, as you know. So we can use the fact that x minus 1 is a factor to actually factor this expression. Once you know one of the factors, you can either do long division or polynomial division, or uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's a method called um, Horner's method, I think, something like that. Anyways, but I'll show you an alternative, which is actually really, really cool. So you'll start with 2x to the fourth, and then continue with minus 2x to the third. And let me tell you why we're doing this. This basically provides x minus 1 as a factor. You're going to realize when I do this, because notice that this is divisible by x minus 1. Do you see it? I hope so. If not, uh, you know, um, just keep watching because I'm going to show you how that works. But this is a good thing, okay? Now, I'll start again. That was the first part. Now, I need to continue with plus x cubed because I have minus x cubed here, as you can see. So to balance out, I do need to add x cubed. But what should I continue with? I will continue with x squared. Why? Let me show you. Because this, again, is divisible by x minus 1. Do you see it? Okay, great. Now, I don't have x squared in the original equation. So I need to add the same thing, so cancel it out. And then, of course, there are two ways to finish this. I can just end with minus 1, and that'll do the trick. Or, if this uh, wasn't, you know, helpful, uh, I can do the following. Up until now, it's going to be the same thing, by the way. But instead of finishing up with a minus 1, which is something that we have in the original equation, we can actually go ahead and continue with a minus x and then a plus x because we don't have an x and then minus 1, which will definitely be clear, right? This is definitely divisible by x minus 1 and this is divisible by x minus 1. But let me go ahead and use this one because I think this one is good enough. But again, it's totally up to you. You can do it either way. Now, here's what happens. 2x cubed factor out. x minus 1 is going to be a factor. Factor out x squared, you'll see x minus 1 again. And x squared minus 1, you should be very familiar with these kinds of things. This is a difference of two squares. So it can be factored into x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. Now, all is good, and we can set it equal to 0, because now we have a common factor, x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1. What are we going to do? Factor out x minus 1. And obviously, we already know that x equals 1 is a solution from the sum of the coefficients, but this is going to allow us to find the other factor, which will hopefully result in finding the other solutions, which may not be very easy, by the way, i got to tell you. And I'm going to show you a formula. So once you factor out 2x minus 1, you're going to get 2x cubed plus x squared plus this, which is x plus 1, right? Maybe I should use a different notation for that. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Obviously, this gives us x equals 1, which we already knew. But this should give us the other three solutions. Now, we don't know if the other solutions are all real. They may be complex, two non-real, maybe, uh, or all real. Uh, in the case of uh, two non-real, they need to be complex conjugates because notice that all the coefficients are real. That's another thing that you need to think about. But whatever happens, 
we should be able to solve this. Now, how do we solve it? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, one method is you can just go ahead and, you know, get rid of the x squared, which makes this a depressed cubic equation. And you can just go from there. So there is an identity that kind of shows you uh, how this works. If you go ahead and cube a plus b, and from that, subtract 3ab times a plus b, which is minus 3a squared b minus 3ab squared, you should end up with a cubed plus b cubed because of the binomial theorem. Now, why is this significant? Because if you call this x, and you'll get a cubic equation in x, and this equation is solvable. Why? Because we know x equals a plus b is a solution. It's kind of like a weird way to come up with an equation or a formula, but that's a really actually clever way to do it. Uh, so here, notice that since we started by assuming x equals a plus b, and since x's are solutions to this equation, one of the solutions have to be a plus b. So by making our equation look like this, we can actually solve it. But what do you notice about this equation? There is no x squared, right? So we need to get rid of x squared. How do you get rid of x squared? Let me go ahead and show you real quick. I'm not necessarily going to finish this because I'm going to show you a formula, which is actually really, really cool. But here's how it goes. First, we divide everything by 2 because we do want to get uh, 1 x cubed, uh, right? And then this is going to be 1 half of x plus 1 half equals 0. And then I want to get rid of x squared, so I should replace x with something. And that will be determined by this y minus the coefficient of 1 half, I mean the coefficient of x squared, divided by the degree, which is 3. In this case, that will be 1 sixth. So if you replace x with y minus 1 over 6, that will eliminate the quadratic term. You're going to have only y cubed. Of course, x will be gone. But you'll have y cubed and y and a constant. And then you can go ahead and just make it look like this and solve the equation from there. But I have another idea. You can actually go ahead and use the formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is called the cubic formula. Are you ready? Here we go. Ta-da! This is the notorious, famous, or infamous, whatever you call it, the cubic formula in all its glory. Notice that none of the coefficients are missing. By the way, here we assume that our equation originally is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, and a, b, c, d are the coefficients, and you can see that x is being expressed in terms of a, b, c, and d. It's not as easy as a, b, c, d, but here's the formula. I hope you enjoy it. By using the formula, we are, we are able to solve it, and that's left as an exercise for you. So go ahead and check it out and see if you can solve this equation by using the cubic formula. You just have to plug it in. That's it, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.